Hello everyone, it's Fine and Steady, and today we're going to be talking about the biggest supply shock Bitcoin has ever had. The liquid supply of Bitcoin has never been this low. This means that the amount of hodlers is increasing more and more and more every single day. Let's get into it. The first chart I want to talk about has a quote here. The market is a device for transferring money from the impatient to the patient. It's a quote by Warren Buffett, a well-known Bitcoin bear. Well, what chart do I have here? The number of accumulation addresses. An accumulation address is a Bitcoin wallet address that is accumulating Bitcoin for the long term and not just holding it short term. So let's see what's happened here. Well, the number of addresses which are holding Bitcoin for the long term has been increasing since May 2018 and is now reaching a record high. That's number one. The most individuals ever are holding Bitcoin. Chart number two. This is the liquid supply chain chart which is from glassnode if you don't know glassnode they have incredible data i really recommend having a dive into their twitter and they have a great website too anyway what does this chart show us it shows us that the supply on the bitcoin blockchain is further drying up despite rising prices this has never happened before for such an extended period of time and as mentioned many times could lead to a massive supply squeeze soon so the bitcoin liquid supply chain this shows you if more bitcoin is coming on the market or if bitcoin is taking out of the market and being put into long-term holding portfolios well these green areas are when more bitcoin is being put onto the market and these red areas is when bitcoin is being taken out of the market and never in the history of bitcoin has the red area predominated on the chart for this long currently we have almost a full year where the supply of bitcoin has has been decreasing almost a full year if you look at the rest of the chart which is more or less average you see that this has never ever been the case so what's the difference between the long-term holders and the short-term holders in this case what is the result of this extended period of decreasing bitcoin supply well currently 78 percent of all of the bitcoin is not liquid that means it's not accessible and being held in long-term holding wallets so let's go through these next few charts what we see here is the change between the e liquid liquid and the highly liquid supply compared to the total amount of bitcoin that's the total of this graph starting in 2010 so as you know as bitcoin exists more and more of it is mined that's why the total has been going up but what's important here is the proportions so starting in 2010 we see that the proportion of the e-liquid amount of bitcoin is increasing faster than the proportion of the liquid and the highly liquid amount of bitcoins and currently we're sitting at 78 percent of the total supply of bitcoin is currently in this blue area which is the e-liquid area this is the highest e-liquid percentage of bitcoin supply that there's ever ever been so let's get into the numbers the e-liquid supply of bitcoin so the bitcoin that's being hodled is 14.5 million the liquid supply is 1.2 million the highly liquid supply is 3 million bitcoin this 1.2 plus 3 is the amount of circulating bitcoin on the market that are available for buying and selling so all the institutions that are coming in are taking it from this small pool here and that is one of the factors that is driving up the price over the recent months the liquidity of bitcoin has decreased dramatically another chart that we can look at is the cumulative change in bitcoin by liquidity class so if we look here the total amount of bitcoins that it's highly liquid and liquid so the red and the orange lines has decreased since the beginning of 2020 by around i don't know let's add these up let's say almost 200k here and just over 400k here so by 600,000 bitcoin since the start of 2020 meanwhile the amount of bitcoin that's been taken out of circulation and put into long-term holding wallets and addresses so the e-liquid supply has increased from 2020 from zero all the way to approximately one million what this means is that more and more people are holding on to their bitcoin for the long term and whoever wants to buy has a smaller and smaller pool of bitcoin to buy from which is driving up 
the price as you can see here with the black line if we go back further and we look from 2017 well the e-liquid supply is this blue line here and the liquid supply is this orange line here and as you can see whenever the blue line is overtaking the orange line we start to have quite a significant pump well recently this blue line, the e-liquid supply, has dramatically begun to overtake the liquid supply. Before we were only looking since the beginning of 2020, now we're looking from the beginning of 2017. And as you can see, they used to be flipping around. Then we had a big bear market where more supply was being liquid than e-liquid. And now we have that trend flip, and that is definitely contributing to the current bull market. In fact, Currently, we are at a stage in which the e-liquid supply is growing more than the total circulating supply. So let's see what that means down here. Well, it means that as time goes on, more Bitcoin is mined, but people are taking their Bitcoin out of the supply at a faster rate currently than Bitcoin are being mined. That's once again another factor that's contributing to this liquidity crisis. Guys, one more chart which might be interesting for you is the HODL waves. So if we look at this, we would see that 3.3 million Bitcoin or approximately 18% of the circulating supply hasn't been moved for over seven years. So let me make this a bit bigger. So if you look here, what you see is that the more red means that the holders are holding for a shorter time period and the more blue means that they're holding for a longer time period. As you can see in the beginning, when Bitcoin came out, obviously everybody was a short-term holder, but as time has gone on, more and more people are long-term holding versus short-term holding, right? If you look here, starting in the orange, it becomes three months to six months holders. So if you look over here, well, you see that most people, approximately 70%, were short-term holders. Whereas if you go down to nowadays, we see what what's this? Uh, only approximately 40% of people are short-term holders and the amount of long-term holders is increasing as well. So all of this just proves the same thing that we already know, that the supply of Bitcoin is decreasing at an accelerating rate and this has to contribute to the increase in price. Now, so far, I've only been talking about the retail side of thing well investors as well but mostly this applies to the retail investor let me show you the difference in supply from Binance and Coinbase as you know Coinbase is the market maker of choice for institutions who are trying to buy large quantities of Bitcoin as you can see here most large institutions are buying their Bitcoin through Coinbase. And if you look at the blue line, this shows the amount of Bitcoin, which is on the Coinbase exchange, right? So as these guys are buying Bitcoin on Coinbase, you see that Coinbase's supply of Bitcoin is absolutely getting destroyed. And they have gone from holding 975,000 all the way down to holding just over 780,000. Whereas Binance, which is purely retail driven, has seen an increase in the amount of Bitcoin that they're holding from approximately, let's go to here, well, 250,000 to approximately 350,000. So Binance, which is almost purely for retail investors, has seen their holdings of Bitcoin increase slightly, which means that more and more people are buying Bitcoin and then deciding to keep it on the exchange. Whereas Coinbase, where most of the institutions are coming in, has seen these dramatic drops in the amount that they have on their exchange because when an institution comes to them, well, the first place where Coinbase is actually giving them Bitcoin from is from the amount which is on their exchanges. So that's why even with the retail pump, because institutions are pretty much only going to Coinbase, Coinbase as an exchange has seen its supply of Bitcoin start to dwindle. I would assume that the institutions are buying this up and deciding to store the Bitcoin in their own offline wallets off of the Coinbase exchange. So guys, 
As you can see, there is a liquidity problem right now with Bitcoin. Well, a problem or a heaven sent, depending on if you're a holder or if you are a seller, right? It's great for anybody holding for the liquid supply to actually be decreasing. That means that there's less coins to bid on. That means that the scarcity is increasing. That means that the entire ethos behind Bitcoin is working and driving up the price. So guys, if you enjoyed this video, smash that like button so you YouTube knows that this is an important video that needs to be shared with more and more people. And if I've earned it, and if you got smarter, please hit the subscribe button. Thank you guys so much for watching and see you in the next one. Bye bye.